The peerless armoured car was built at the end of the First World War. It was actually built because they'd nearly run out of armoured cars. They'd used them all up during the First World War, but they needed more, mainly for imperial policing. And the only answer they could come up with was to use the peerless. Now, the British Army had stocks of peerless lorries. It was peerless model TC4. They were built in Cleveland, in Ohio, and they were shipped over here and used extensively by the British Army. So what they decided to do was fit armoured hulls to a hundred of the chassis. The armoured hulls were built by Austins. That's why you've got this twin turret layout, which is exactly the same as the Austin armoured cars that we used in Russia and with 17th Battalion in France in 1918. But the Peerless was, as I say, a post-war vehicle. The lorry chassis itself is powered by a four-cylinder, 40-horsepower engine, driving through a four-speed gearbox, and then chain drive to the back axle. Now, chain drive was quite common in those days. It was an alternative to a live axle, which is one with the differential in it. And it worked just as well. In fact, it gave better ground clearance and was very popular. But you don't find it around nowadays. It's gone completely. Um, but the chassis is this tough old American lorry, and it will go on almost forever. The vehicle itself, the whole thing, weighs about six tons. And you'll notice that the body doesn't go all the way to the back of the chassis. That's because the body was designed originally for another type of armored car, and putting it onto this thing, which was longer, didn't work very well. The um, vehicle's fitted with armor plate eight millimeters thick, which is pretty well bulletproof, about average for those days. Carried a crew of four. You'd have a driver, a car commander, and then two men in the machine gun turrets. Each turret was armed with a Hotchkiss air-cooled machine gun, which meant it could fire in two directions at once. But the vehicle itself, they were clumsy, they were incredibly slow. As you can see, they run on solid rubber tires, and they were an absolute disaster off the road. Anywhere on the road, they were fine, as long as you had time to wait for them to arrive. But off the road, they just got bogged down and stuck. So they were useless, really, as armoured cars. But they were made to last. They would last forever. In fact, many of the old peerless lasted well into the Second World War. And this one is in pretty well good working order, as far as we know. You'll notice also it's fitted with wooden spoked wheels. Now, originally, they all had these, but the dear old Irish discovered that if you had a long metal rod and put it through the wheel, you could break the spokes and disable the vehicle. So a few peerless were produced with armoured spoked wheels, metal wheels instead, just to defeat that idea. But uh, I've seen a photo of a car with one of these wheels smashed, and it's quite dramatic what happens. It just collapses. But that's really all about the chassis of the vehicle. The body, 8mm armoured plate. The other thing about it is that although you didn't actually have a fifth man to do the job, it was possible for a man to leave his seat in the turret and to go to a rear steering position. He's facing backwards, he's got a steering wheel in front of him, and the idea is that if the car gets into serious trouble in a street somewhere, you can reverse it out and the bloke can see where he's going and steer it. It meant that he didn't have a clutch or a brake or anything like that. He was relying on the driver to do those things, and he had to steer it where he could. So it didn't happen very often. It wasn't really successful, but it was there. And it was an option that was carried out on a number of armoured cars between the wars. But the Peerless was an ugly brute of a thing. At the, you know, at 1920, about then, we gave some of them to the Irish Army when the Free State was formed, and um, the remainder of the hundred stayed in Britain. They tried to sell them to the Indians at one point, but even India had more sense and wouldn't have the Peerless because it had no off-road or climbing ability at all, and so they never went anywhere. They only stayed in Britain. They were used during the general strike for escorting food convoys from the docks, and they were then passed on to the armoured car companies. You see, this one's got the badge of the 23rd Armoured Car Company, which was County of London Yeomanry. And that's how they served between the wars. Just a few of them to each Yeomanry regiment, just to cover them until they got a better armoured car, which, my goodness me, they deserved. So that's the peerless. There's not a tremendous amount you can say about it. But it's a tough old vehicle. 
It'll go on forever, but you have to be careful where you use it. <laughs>